So this week, we are focusing on the business of fashion, yeah? We're taking a trip down the runway or up the runway um, of fashion. And um, we have an exciting panel to talk to you this morning. But even, well, even before I go there, I want to introduce you to um, my guest host for this morning a gentleman who um, has fashion in his blood <laughs> and has been with JBDC for many years. You know, that kind of relationship that where you're on and off, but you're still on, <laughs> you know, that way there. <laughs> but he has been with JBDC for, for many years and he understands inside out the business of fashion and very, very familiar. And he does also have some very provoking thoughts as it relates to the business of fashion and the direction. So without further ado, I want to welcome um, our fashion designer at JBDC, Mr. Robert Hall, who will be hosting um, the session this morning. But before Robert speaks, I want to, as you know, you guys know, uh, those of you who have been here before, know that we start with a poll because we want to know exactly who is in the room who we're talking to um, so that our panelists can direct their conversations accordingly. So the poll will be launched now, David, um, and the next voice you'll hear and next face you'll see will be Robert Hall. Robert, your turn. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, great to be interacting with you this morning. Uh, as uh, Mr. David said, this morning, one we'll looking at the business of fashion and what interesting times we are actually living in. Uh, of course, nobody expected COVID. And of course, I know prior to that, we were pretty much in a very um, positive time in terms, of, in terms of the economy. And out of that, I think a lot of us were enjoying some kind of um, buoyancy in terms of the business that we were doing. But, but with COVID, of course, um, a lot of changes have happened. And we definitely want to be looking at um, how is it that we respond to this in terms of future. Um, just to give a little background, uh, we know that internationally for the last 10 years, we've had a very, um, we've, we've had a, um, you know, a bit of a different trajectory in terms of fashion because um, if you're not aware, you know, and of course we all know this because it has happened to us here that the internet has has actually affected our lives in a major way. So, you know, nowadays most of us are Yes, that has that has no change. How it is that we do a lot of what we do, you know, a lot of what um, has been physical has now becoming virtual. Even though I know in our industry, in terms of the physical production of product, then that's something that you, you, you can't necessarily, let's say, move online just so property design part of the process. Um, with that, there have been many conversations that have been have, happening internationally, and of course, it has changed the tenor. I mean, to have us look, um, have us look at what we're doing very differently. And so, of course, we are. Most of us are aware that nowadays, if you're not, if you're in fashion, and you're not, you're not considering how it is that you're doing what you're doing in terms of how you're producing and where you're sourcing and what is the, the environmental impact that what you're doing is having on um, you know the world then really and truly you know you really are not where you're supposed to be because of course we know that climate change prior to COVID climate change was probably the top conversation the top conversation consideration that you could just not ignore anymore. Anyway, um, that being said, um, of course, as we consider this environment and internationally, the business of fashion um, predicted that even though we're, we had um, a number of years of serious growth in the industry, this was a year that we were expecting some kind of um, recession in terms of international economy, um, economically, and then out of that, that would be the effect of the kind of positive growth that we're seeing year over year and then locally well locally for us now i know you know a lot of fashion in jamaica doesn't necessarily happen you know by itself per se 
but we often are and we often happen along with and so we often see fashion associated with entertainment of course people have lots of places to go lots of events and out of that then they would actually have lots of clothing um, or the need to actually shop and actually procure new garments with covid of course all of that has changed and of course you now people are moving from you know fashion which seems to be more or less off on the need side to more of the what side and of course where because of the uncertainty and just really not knowing probably what the end of the day or what the next day or the next week holds then of course people are people's shopping habits people people's habits in terms of procurement of course all events are cancelled um, there's no traveling, so there are no vacations. And so this really has affected how business operate. This morning, we want to just reflect um, on ourselves. And of course, COVID is giving that, us that opportunity because, you know, of course, we can't go nowhere for the most part. Um, most of us have to stay, um, um, stay in place. So there is, it's time for us, of course, in this very fast industry to slow down, yes. And along with that, it's probably a good time to reflect and begin to strategize how are we going to approach the future of this industry post, um, well, when things return to some semblance of normal as such. So this morning we have a very esteemed panel of individuals. Um, we have, from multiple perspectives in the local space, we have Laura Jones, she is, um, a consultant and also she's like a lecturer at the Manny College. We have Karen Clark, who we know as the chief architect behind the Moda Market series, and of course the owner of one of the premier boutiques um, in Kingston. We have Donovan Summers, who many may not know, but if you're in the industry, you probably know him. And he is one of the partners behind the Heather Lane line. And um, you know somebody who's very passionate about um, movement in this industry, and we also have Ayanna Dixon, who is a fashion designer and no more um, an illustrator, and she has lovely products that she do. And she, all of these individuals are going to be bringing some perspective to the discussion this morning. So I want to start off with Laura, and Laura is going to talk about. Um, from the classroom to the mall, your future in design. Now, Laura Jones, right now at this particular point, she is the uh, acting head of the Applied Arts at the Edmund College. She's a lecturer in the textile and fashion department. Uh, but outside of that, she's also a consultant to the industry and she's definitely very passionate about person developing healthy, sustainable businesses. She has extensive experiences, experience locally and internationally in the gift and craft industry. And she was actually the head of the gift and craft cluster uh, for a period when um, we had the cluster program up uh, in Jamaica. Uh, if you meet Laura, you know Laura as somebody who is able to manage an excellent manager. And she really has her eye focused on the producer, the artisan, the, the entrepreneur, uh, developing a healthy, sustainable business that will produce profit and actually produce excellent products. So, Laura, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Robert, my good friend. I didn't know I was going to be first. Well, welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, Yes, I hope this will be, uh, you know, something that everybody can take away and feel like, you know, we're empowered to move ahead in these challenging times. So I'm going to share my screen, but I don't want you to focus too much on the screen. I'm going to try and just have a kind of a conversation. I have this PowerPoint because I don't want you to see my ugly face too much. But yeah, everybody hearing me, by the way? You hearing me clear? Awesome. Awesome. Great, great. So uh, I am sure there are some students um, tuned in. I'm really hoping that they are um, because, you know, we're really in some, it's very, it's interesting times, boy, challenging, you know, being locked in and limited movement in terms of some of the things we can do and that we're used to doing. But um, I must say upfront that there are some opportunities there, um, even with all of these challenges that we have. So I will definitely 
the conversation is yes, looking at the classroom to the mall, to the industry. But I'm kind of skewing it in a way that we can really, you know, it's not just about the classroom, but it's really about, you know, this industry. So, um, my first slide here, uh, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, here we go. Right. So, I want to say that, boy, this would not be, what is happening now, there's no textbook. We never learned this in a, in a high school. We surely never learned this in a university. There is nothing that prepares us for this moment, you know. And for those of us who are spiritual people, our truth students, we talk about living in the moment and taking it day by day. And surely COVID is showing us that, boy, you really have to just put one foot in front of the other and take, the, take it in small bites, yeah? So, as I say here, this is a time when we, we have to think on our feet. And when I think about being in the classroom sometimes, you know, you, you know when you're in design school, it's that time where, you know, you're, you're kind of in your zone and yes, this dream and I'm going to be the successful designer or, you know, whatever the field may be. And being in school gives you, or in college, gives you that opportunity. It gives you a, a playing field. You know, you, you just, there's no limitation, so to speak. And, you know, the world is your oyster. And, and you see things a certain way. I also want to put in context that sometimes there is this view that, you know, the fashion and design industry is all glitz and glamour. So um, I, I get a lot of students come in who are, they're gung-ho about the fashion show side or the trade show, you know, the end product side of, of, of the, um, the industry. And I would say that what COVID is showing us, it's not really, that's not the only, that's not the side that makes the, the business sustainable. It's the back end, you know, the real back end, because I know there are, there are people in production with their factories now who are really looking and saying, okay, what can I do with these resources that I have? You know, I have to pay the light bill. I have to pay the loan if there's a loan. Um, nobody's buying clothes right now, per se. So what do I do with these resources? So for me, this time shows to any design student what the real industry is about. And when you make these real decisions about, you know, how you go forward, do I close the factory for, for some time? Do I lay off people or do I just let people go? You know what I mean? Um, what do I do with all that fabric that I may have ordered and it's probably stuck on the wharf somewhere or just in my storeroom, right? So this is the time when you really have to think on your feet. I would also say this is the time when your skill level, your years in business, your niche, your own signature is what is going to keep you afloat and to kind of just ride out the storm, you know? So this is where, what I'm saying, the, the rubber meets the road kind of a thing. Right. Um, go back. Right. So I already went through this notion of the glitz and the glamour, right? And it's not really so. Um, yeah. So I went through this already as well. So I want to just zero in a little bit on the opportunities that are there, because there are opportunities there. And I know Donovan would speak about, oh, you just had to wheel a little bit and come to making masks because there was a demand for that. And I want some of those, the young entrepreneurs and students in the um, logged in to understand that being a designer, being a fashion designer, any kind of designer is also about flexibility. You don't box yourself in to say, boy, you know, I only make shoes and hat and bag and that's it. Um, one of the things, being a graduate of the Edna Manley College really cemented in me when I left, when I graduated, was the fact that I was kind of, you know, I was multi-talented. I had different skill set that, um, you know, I could just really move across different sectors and, and feel comfortable and not just be saying that I'm a textile designer and that's all that I do. And that was one of my biggest um, things taken away from Edna Manley College and starting to work 
with um, Jampra at the time that you know the flexibility to just be able to you know kind of like fit in and, and to, 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 to still be a creative but also be a strong creative in the business sector for argument's sake you know and I want students to feel that you know what you do in college is not just about the, the specific area but it's really how you apply yourself now to use your skill to use that knowledge in a vast amount of areas and I would say right now COVID this COVID situation really gives designers the opportunity to see you know to stretch yourselves to see what are the opportunities there that you can really tap into um, the future of design is going to be driven surely by innovation and technology and where maybe in Jamaica we are not at the, the you know on par with other spaces we have to keep this in the in the fore you know what I mean and we have to make sure that the technology there's infusion of innovation and technology in everything that we do so in preparing for the the talk um, I, I, I was able to I, I pulled up on an article that was written by Catherine uh, Zarella for the Wall Street Journal um, earlier this year so in, in January this year and it was an article that was looking at the eight predictions for the future of fashion now I'm not going to go through all of these but there are some that I zeroed in on and I thought well you know this COVID situation definitely brings these into some serious focus right now one of them was the return to real shopping and the idea here was that because we're so and especially now you know everything has moved to an online platform now what this author was saying that there's going to be um, a, 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 a kind of move back to real shopping you know where you go into the space and have retail experience you go and you take up the clothes and you put it on and you smell it and you show your girlfriend or you show your husband you know there's going to be some amount of that coming back because the online the, the, the pace of online shopping is just it's so it's, it's just so fast that luxury brands definitely have to look at different ways now to to market and position their products now I put that in context with what what is what is happening now with COVID and I say well you know when we all when the place opens up again and when we we are free to go to the parties etc people are going to want to have that real like they're going to want to move away from the, the computer and they want to get outside they want to go to the parties they want to go shopping you know what I mean it's just that kind of um, it's just that nature of us and so here's an opportunity for retailers to be ready for that for designers to be ready for that what are we going to be showing to these consumers who have been locked up six months to a year and are now ready to have teared on the place with excitement and you know in a Jamaica we have to go all out eh? so there is going to be some return it might take a time but we have to prepare ourselves for that and it means that we need to come fresh and new exciting ideas have to be there for retail so that was one of the things I picked out of this conversation another um, prediction was the, um, the what she calls the QR quest and this is where um, you're using QR codes to basically check and trace the production of the products that you're consuming and wearing so for example there was a college the um, the fashion innovation agency at the Lon London College of Fashion they did a an experiment where they were able to track a sweater back to the source of a to a, of an alpaca on a farm in England right so this this really speaks about the environmental issues that has been an ongoing topic as it relates to fashion this speaks about the um, the ethical considerations as we're talking you know the production of fashion because we do know that fashion generates a lot of waste right so these QR um, codes will be able to know you, you'll be wearing things that you can now track to source as far back as to the, the fiber the animal that this 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 fiber came from 
and that is is one of the predi the predictions for fashion of the future um and i think that we need to that's a consideration for us here in jamaica how we integrate the technology and 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 so forth we'll have to think about it but definitely our consumers our customers are going to be more savvy and would want to have those kinds of conversations with us so as a design student for example you need to be looking at how can i bring the, the innovation and the technology even though i'm situated right here in jamaica you understand me another one that struck out to me that stuck out to me was the suited bridesmaid and i'm like oh wow so here they're saying that the bridesmaid is going to move away from the fancy frocks so to speak and they're going to want to be in suits now the thing about a good suit and i i mean well, I guess my husband can school me on that, is that you want to make sure that it, it, it looks, it fits well, it, it hangs well on the body. And so it's a very technical um, construction. And if I look at some of my students and what they do in class sometimes, they, they're not so really into the sewing part of it, you know. But the reality is fashion and, and, and signature fashion is about impeccable construction. Yes? So here's an opportunity for any um, entrepreneur, any design student who wants to now look at tailoring, for example, as their niche to really hammer that down and hone in on those skills. And, and definitely this kind of downtime is the time when we look at honing some of those skills that, you know, we've been thinking about it but we've not had the opportunity to spend the time with it. And I would say, surely now is that opportunity to spend time with those skills that we haven't honed to the best of our ability. So I thought that was, that was interesting. I'm, I'm not going to go through the others right now, but I also want to say, um, some students may ask me now, really, um, degree, university, in this time is like, What's the value of that? But I want to tell you, yes, there is value in getting that degree or going to college or finishing your program. There's also value in, um, so it might not be the job that you, you, you might go into, may not ask you, the person may not ask you, you know, do you have a degree? Do you have a master's? But they may tap into what is the skill set that you bring to the table if there are individuals who are looking to find jobs for those of you who are going to be setting up your own um, endeavors what I would say you want to bring to the table is you want to really master um, what you're offering you want to be damn good at what you're doing so that the, the 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 potential customer has no questions to ask but say you know what me I go look up Mr. Robert the money tight me going down to Heather Lane because I need to get I need to do some re retail therapy right now you know and i'm going to heather lane with my eyes closed because i know when i go there i'm getting a quality item it's going to fit me there's no questions asked and so those are some of the things that i would say um is very important now and not just for students but all the entrepreneurs and 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 and, and business um persons that are right in this forum right now as i say here in this slide it is the highly skilled attention to detail finish impeccable construction and execution that will be always be the hallmark of sign signature fashion and design and so this downtime is not the time to panic and fret and 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 all of that but to look at it as time to be patient to ride out the storm and also to just you know tap into and strengthen those areas that we're not so good at so if for the longest while you've been thinking boy you know i really should try to to have an e presence you know we have an online presence now this is the time that you can focus on that you know what i mean if it is that you felt that for the longest while you know i'm really strong on the creative side but i really want to sharpen my business acumen now is the time to tap into some of those courses and webinars i see a lot of universities um ivy league universities offering courses online some of them free so here's a time now where you, where you can tap into that and sharpen those skills because once they once we get past covid and the gate fly as we'll say in jamaica nobody is going to remember that we were bogged down for six months to a year 
can't do nothing because of COVID. Everybody is going to want to be at that start line and just get out. And they're going to be going. And it's going to be fast. And only those who are armed and ready are going to, 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 to win, so to speak. You know, those first out the blocks are going to be the winners. And so this is the time you now where you see where you stand. You, you analyze also, is this the industry I want to be in? Because this is the real deal. These are some of the tough decisions that we will make in this business. It's not only about the fashion show and the trade fair and we'll go and we'll see the pretty things and you know the makeup and, and you feel. Hell no. It is all about the real back end work and the, the hard decisions that we have to make behind the scenes to make this industry really as sustainable and as, as glitzy as we as we see it. So I think I'll stop there for now. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, thank you so much. I'm um, just kind of recapping up there some of what she said. And I really like what she's only done because she's she one of the words that you heard coming up a couple of times was the whole issue of opportunity. You know, one person said that look, every crisis has associated opportunity, so it's really great. Another thing that I want to point out was she highlighted the fact that. The future of design is going to be driven by innovation and technology. And I know sometimes that's one of the things that I find that sometimes we tend to forget when you get so bogged down with running the business and trying to, you know, keep everything in the black, etc. But we have to understand that this is a creative space and innovation must be innovation must be at our forefront and nowadays we have lots of tools which are which is your technology we have lots of tools to embrace to actually um you know um tackle a lot of the problems that we're you know that we have to deal with nowadays thank you so much laura and we're going to be having an opportunity to ask questions so um santa please correct me if i'm wrong but and um, my understanding is that you can actually begin to type um questions in the chat Yes, yeah, they can start. They can go ahead and type questions in the chat, but the questions will be addressed after all the presentations have been completed, and then the discussion begins. So we'll address the questions during the discussion. Thank you so much. Excellent. So if you if you have questions that are coming up, you just type them in the chat, and once other presentations have been complete, then we're gonna actually go into questions. Uh, so the next person that we're going to have presenting is Mr. Donovan Somers. He is, I like to call him the third partner behind Heather Lane. Um, most of us know Heather Lane as Zoe um, Somers and Charanita, which you know you often see at the show when you go there. But Donovan Somers, in my opinion, is almost like the silent partner that is there. Oftentimes when I book him up, we have these protracted conversations, really tackling um, you know, a lot of the issues that, you know, we have to deal with on the ground in terms of fashion, just looking at multiple perspectives. I think probably his engineering background probably is the reason why he often is looking at, you know, these entities and see how can we do this better? How can we win? Um, Donovan has been involved where, you know, Heather Lynn has been around for quite some time and Donovan has been, you know, Donovan and his wife and Sharon, they have been behind that entity for I'm sure probably a good 20 years right now. But um, he also was the um, head of a fashion cluster um, a couple of years ago where, you know, he was the one leading that group of individuals and ensuring at the point that you know, they were, you know, you know, making a concerted effort to just bring the different poles of the industry together to something organized that, you know, as a country that, you know, we could continue the whole process of, you know, establishing this space. So Donovan this morning is going to talk to us about carving out your own niche um, within this space. And so Donovan, over to you. Robert, uh, thank you very much. Um, morning to everybody. Uh, as, Robert, as Robert said, um, we, Heather Lane Limited, we've been in business for, I think, somewhere in excess of 20 years now that I've been in and around this business. And those of you who know me know that I'm very passionate about the fashion industry. Um, Sansa knows this very well. I know that I chat forever about everything. So she gave me just a small sentence today. Uh, speak about carving out a niche. 
For those of you who don't know, I'd introduce a little bit to Heather Lane. Um, my, my tech is on stretching over here to share the screen. And just a few pictures on what we do. Um, we, we are in the fashion business. We, we make casual wear primarily. Our main market is the hotel, resort, gift shop, as well as our own boutique um, in Kingston. Uh, the pictures that you're seeing, some of the stuff we make, um, we only sell what we manufacture, manufacture locally. Um, presently, as this uh, picture shows, we are making masks. And I will make a little comment later about just being home to new opportunities. You really have to make what people are buying. Um, there's no point doing anything else. And presently, masks are an opportunity, and I think a good opportunity to do it on this topic. Uh, as I said, I've been asked to speak about carving out a niche. And um, I just want to make a general comment first. Um, basically, you're looking at niche marketing or mass marketing or versus mass, mass marketing. Um, mass marketing has two primary components, quality and price. And in a, in a general market setting, sometimes it's very difficult to establish when you are mass marketing that your quality is better than somebody else's quality. Or to establish a better t-shirt, a better pair of underwear, a better pair of, you know, that's a, a better uh, work shoe. Sometimes it's hard. And mass marketing has a way of getting down to price. Um, most of the Jamaican fashion businesses can't compete in a mass market that's left for mass marketing environment. That's left for the Indians, the Chinese, Bangladesh, and um, you know, the big, the big the place with big infrastructure. So really niche marketing is for most of us our only option. So what is niche marketing? Um, by definition, it's, it's, it's going after a, a segment of a larger market that has its own unique needs and own, and own preferences and identity. Um, let me just say that again. You, you, you're really looking at a large market, so we're in the fashion business. You're looking at one segment. Um, we're, going, we're making swimwear, we're making sandals, we're making um, printed t-shirts. Um, and each segment has its own unique needs and its preferences and its identity. And this is the market that you're going after. This is not going to be your niche. So I'll make a few quick points and then um, you know, we have other speakers. We have to start from knowing your market. You have to spend time to know the market. It's not good enough just, I have a good product, so the market will buy my product. No, no, no the market doesn't have to do anything. You have to know what the market, you have to go in and, and, and take the time, identify the market, market segment you are going after and develop the strategies to get to that market segment. In this regard, knowledge is truly the power that you have. You, you, yeah, the, the, your product might be great. Nobody's buying it, nobody's buying it. Uh, secondly, you have to make your product unique. Now, note in a, in a general way, I'm not saying make a unique product. You might be making a shirt. There are many, many shirts in the world. You don't have to own a shirt. But you have to find a way to make your shirt your shirt. And it has to be unique. You are coming into the market. Um, in the fashion business, there are some simple criteria. You start with fabric. You start with your label. You go with your label, your styling your embellishments, your, your trim, your buttons. Um, okay, everybody makes a white shirt. Mine may have a silver button. Mine may have a, a wooden button, a shell button, label. I may put a logo. I have, you have to find a way to make a product, your product. And most importantly, you have to attach yourself to your brand. Your product has to tell your story. 
So, so okay, it's a hang tag, and your product says, um, I learned to sew from my, my grandfather who was a banana man, who cut bananas in the day, and late at night, so used to sew for the neighbors on a little machine, and I used to sit beside him and trim, and that's how I learned to sew. That's your story. Tell that story. So that the person is not just buying a shirt, they're buying a shirt of the grandson of the banana man who learned to sew by a bottle lamp late at night. They're buying a whole, a whole product. So, so make your product unique. Then we have to know, and Laura pointed out some of that, we have to rethink how you spread the word about your business. Yes, we grow up and advertise on TV or advertise with the Gleaner. In a niche market environment, you have to get to your niche. It's not just good enough to tell everybody. You're not selling to everybody. You're selling to your niche. And present technology gives us some wonderful opportunities there. Social media, some of it is free. But we're prepared to invest a little bit sometimes. Um, not so little because in US dollars mostly. But um, invest in, in, in targeting. Uh, there are some social media options. I'm not so good at it. Find somebody who, who is. Most of us has. You have young people around you. Young people know, know how to do this. Um, grab one of them, sit them down and say, look, I need to get my story, my product, to every woman who works in Kingston, Moby, and Port Antonio. They can do that. And if that's your target market, invest in doing that. There are some platforms that they call, they, I think the term is PPC, pay-per-click, where you don't just pay into advertising, you actually pay for it each time somebody clicks onto your link. And that costs a little bit of money. But be prepared to invest in getting your product to your niche market. Um, the, the, the two other points. Uh, one is keep tabs on your competitor. Now, I'm not suggesting industrial espionage. I'm not suggesting that you go and spy through anybody's window. But you have to know the marketplace and you have to know what your competitor is doing. You're selling it to a tiny market. It can disappear overnight. You're, you're selling, somebody comes along, they look, they're keeping tabs on you. They do what you do better, $5 less, and your market is gone. Right? You have to know. Yes, you're being dynamic. Yes, you're trying to push ahead, but know what the market is doing. Follow social media, be aware. Visit the stores that you are selling into. Make sure you're talking to the the sales reps who are in these stores so that they're telling you what the customer feedback is. Know and, and look, look, see what other people are doing. You have to know your market and you have to know what your competitor is doing. Um, be open to new opportunities. That, I won't say much more about that than say mass. I never thought in my wildest dream, 20 years making pants and shirts and dresses and high fashion stuff. And one, we were at home for three weeks, not shut down the business. We were at home for three weeks. And we said, right, well, let's try and make some masks. So we got two girls out, started making masks. And in two weeks, we had most of our staff back making masks, um, still at it. And, you know, it, we're getting our share. I mean, it's a full for people. Everybody was a sewing machine is making a mask now. And that's fine. But we think we have a good product. We are sticking with what we're doing. And we're making masks. Um, we're preparing ourselves, as Laura said. I, I entirely endorse what she said. When this breaks, as it were, the market is not going to cut you any slack because you are locked up at home. First, the person who are ready are going to be are going to be gone. And by the time you get back in there and tell them, oh, I just get in the fabric now and I'm starting out, they're going to miss whole opportunity and they're going to create a working space for your competitors that you may take you years to get back to where you are. So we don't have the luxury of wasting time on it.
And lastly, in this niche market business, listen to your customers. You have to hear your customers. And I mean really listen. Your customer knows your business better than you do. No, no, let me say that again, because you may not accept that. Your customer knows your business better than you do. Your customer does not know how to do what you do. They might not know how to sew clothes. They might not know how to make a bag. And most times they don't. That's why they're buying it. But they know your business emphasis on business. You are in the business to take their money. You want to get their money. And they know why they spend their money. And that's the business right there. They know why they spend that dollar. So you have to listen to them. You have to understand what is going to make this customer spend this dollar. And then you have to provide that. All right, so that's my MVP, so I'm carving out your niche. Um, I, I'm here, I can answer questions after, but I'm looking forward to the other presenters. And I didn't say hi to Kerry, I didn't say hi to Laura. And I don't know how to do it, obviously, the chat thing, because I'm technically challenged, but I'm here. All right, guys. Um, I hope we were really hearing what he was saying, because I really appreciate what I really appreciate um, was the focus on the customer. The last thing that I said is probably the most, one of the most poignant thing. Your customer knows your business better than you, right? We really need to spend time listening to our customers. And he also reiterated what Laura said, that really and truly know it's prep time. This is prep time. This is not, oh my God, you know, yes, we know it's difficult, but they see, see this as prep time for when things return to some level of normalcy. And you know your customers are going to come back. And where are they coming back to? Lars like said earlier, people want real experience. People want tactile experiences. And Darwin highlighted the whole issue of ensuring that you're putting yourself into your product. Okay, it's not just I'm making arbitrary things. Know your market and ensure you get to know them well, and ensure that you're putting yourself in your. Um, Product. And that's a good platform to segue into our next presenter, who is the fabulous and awesome Kerry and Clark of uh, Kerry Man, Woman and Home, which is, if you never know, I'm sure you know, but just in case you never know, is one of the premier boutiques that has been sustained from I don't even know how long, but I mean, an excellent compendium collection of beautiful products across the fashion and lifestyle segments. And then she has evolved that into um, the lovely um, branded Moda Market series, which brings to you um, opportunities, um, this beautiful experience across a couple of days where they're usually uh, a fashion show, so there's a fashion element, and then there's Moda Market where you have a lovely opportunity to procure what you've seen. And she also, and within that, she produces this lovely magazine, um, the Moda Magazine, and there's often a workshop as well, too, which speaks. So I know she really is heavy on giving back and really trying to engender uh, a, a, a new um, designer, a new producer who really understands all that and is ready to actually do business. So we are really privileged to actually have Kerry here with us sharing this morning. And Kerry, it's over to you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet. I want to say thank you first for inviting me. Um, I'm honored to be here and I'm excited to share my thoughts on um, the marketing of fashion and your business during these challenging times. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that sentence. <laughs> Thanks. Oh my God. Um, it's no secret that, um, and Donovan, it's so nice to see Donovan. I have not seen Donovan since I was like 15 years old. That's over, I'm not telling the exact time, but that's over 25 years ago. So I have not seen Donovan since as a teenager. I'm yeah, so I'll take that, I'll take that. Platform with you. Um, so it is no secret that COVID is having this global economic um, impact and internationally, you have big wigs such as J. Crew and Neiman Marcus who have filed for bankruptcy. You have people like Nordstrom that was in a profitable position leading up to this pandemic who has now announced plans to close 16 of their stores. So 
it is serious times that we have to plan accordingly and act accordingly. In normal times, I think uh, financial planning teams, and that could be, I mean, in my business, I am marketing, finance, bio, advertising, I am everything. Um, we typically use a range of like driver-based models so we can budget properly and we can forecast properly. Obviously today we're being pushed to conjure up this crystal ball to overnight think of important decisions for our business to stay afloat during COVID. So I personally don't think COVID is all doom and gloom. And if you listen to, you know, some of the people I like to follow who are not necessarily in fashion are the likes of a Bill Gates, a Warren Buffett, a Elon Musk. And it's always interesting to me to look at highly successful people to understand how they think and how they look at crises so that we can create opportunities when times like this come about. Um, for me, what the first, first, most important thing that I would like everybody to do is to change your mindset. COVID is not time to panic. You need to think positively and you need to look towards what can be done to sustain your business, to stay afloat and to move forward because this is the new normal and who knows how long this is going to last. So first and foremost, a positive mindset. I think that is the most important thing. Um, and we definitely have time to develop that positive mindset if we didn't have it before. So, ah, let me share my screen. This first time using Zoom. Um, there we go. Are you guys seeing the screen? Yes, sir. All right, so the first thing I would like to talk about is online platforms. If you didn't have an online platform before, now is the time to build yourself an online platform. Um, the feedback I typically get from you know, young entrepreneurs, artisans, creative um, persons is that websites are difficult and it doesn't make sense because you can't figure out a payment option. First of all, a website is very easy to build. You have Wix, that is basically, you can close your eyes, put in the data, and your platform is there. Our platform, I use PayPal. People complain about taking too long to get paid from PayPal, but you're going to get paid. So your decision is, do I have an online presence or do I not? Are you going to not do it because it's difficult? You have to do it because what COVID has shown is that people like Amazon, they're stuck and their sales are going through the roof. I mean, there are very few stocks right now that are doing well. Um, I think the Dow was down 200 points this morning, but we had our website for a couple of years and my initial thinking behind the website was that it creates online visibility. So whether or not the sales were happening through the website, if people were searching for clothing stores, boutiques, lifestyle, et cetera, at least the store would pop up. And that alone in itself, I think is something that is positive. So moving away from that, um, try, to, try to take the time and build a platform, figure out how to get PayPal to accept payments, link it with a US bank account, or if you have a sister or a friend or a relative who you trust, ask them to set up PayPal overseas on their account. So it is not impossible and I recommend it highly. We have been focusing a lot on it. This morning, I got up quite early and I was scrolling through Instagram and saw a post by Mark Anthony with masks again and um, read it and it said shop online. And I got so excited and I called Mark. I was like, Mark, you have a website. And he said, Kerry, COVID made me do it. And he said, I I launched my website, I got my first sale of 77 US dollars, I printed it and I am going to frame it because that is income coming in that he wouldn't necessarily have. So again, Mark is forward thinking, he's on it. He was one of the first people that I knew of making masks to kind of get some cash flow going um, and has launched it. So guys, build a website, you have platforms, you have Wix, you have Shopify, you have Squarespace, you have blogs that you can turn. Unfortunately, Instagram does not allow Jamaica as a country to sell via Instagram, but you can also put your Instagram posts 
on your website and have, have a message that says, contact us if you'd like something and do it through direct marketing. So it's, it's really a no brainer um, as it relates to marketing and trying to make some sales in these uncertain times. <laughs> the next um, platform that I think is, is super important is social media. Um, it's, it's a free platform, you're not paying for it to create a business account um, and it is free advertising. So I would say invest in good photographers, have them take pictures and start promoting your business as such. And then on your post, you can also say shop online. So you're, you're promoting two parts and two aspects of your business. You can shop, you're creating visibility on your um, social media, it's free advertising, and you can make sales. Although in Jamaica, we can't make sales. You can say DM us. There's always a way. So you have to have that positive mindset and you have to, you know, think a little bit outside of the box. Um, I put this e example up on this slide um, with social media because the next thing I was going to speak about is influencer marketing. And fashion is so interesting to me because I have um, seen fashion go from, you know, in magazines where Mag Vogue pretty much created supermodels of the world and that was in the 80s. And it was all about the six supermodels, Naomi, Claudia, the Linda, what have you. That culture quickly changed and became the movie stars, celebrities, or everything that the magazines were pushing. You never had to be a model, you are a celebrity. And now, and then it moved to influencers. So we've seen the Kim Kardashians. I think Kim Kardashian hit 170 million followers yesterday. Yes, I follow her. And, <laughs> and uh, brands were now spending less on traditional print advertising. Um, and celebrity advertising and now going towards influencers. That has changed with COVID. And if you're keeping up, they are now spending less on influencers. Influencers have lost a lot of their paychecks now. But what the focus has turned to is micro influencers. And micro influencers are typically people who have about 10,000 and up followers, whereas the big influencers have a lot more. Now, this slide here, um, whoopsie is a post that I did maybe two days ago and it's just a Jamaica nice mug because Jamaica nice is like, has become one of my favorite sayings. And I posted that picture of which got 239 likes. It's okay. Yes. But then Nicole yes. Taren Campbell, who has, I'm not even sure how many hundreds of thousands of followers, posted herself wearing a t-shirt, Jamaica nice, that I had gifted her. And from her post, it got 28,000 views and I think, not sure, but from her post, we're pretty much so low to Jamaican ice mugs. So I didn't ask her to do it, but I sent her a gift and I helped her out. And it was just nice of her to do that. So it's very important to engage influencers, micro influencers. Um, I think I have another slide where this is a, a micro influencer, Michelle Simone, who's also a designer, also a creative. Um, she does swimsuits, Miss Sim made it, who about two or three, three weeks ago, like right at COVID, I just sent some clothes to her and said, yeah, let's just do a collab together. She posted this first picture and it got almost a thousand views. I don't know if it translated into sales, but my point is that these are ways that you keep your visibility, you keep your customer engaged without having to do too much by yourself. All right, next platform, Facebook shopping. Who knew it? I personally also think a website will become obsolete further along because now you can shop on Instagram when it opens up globally. I think it's really Jamaica and a couple of South American countries that they have not allowed us to activate the shopping as yet. I don't know why, but you can actually have Facebook shopping. You can. I use my Facebook and Instagram um, laterally. So I just link to both of them. So I have like that double visibility. But you can create a shop on your Facebook page. Once you have a business account, you create a shop and you can also push Facebook shopping. So why not take advantage of doing that? And then like Laura was saying, you know, forget about um, online for a second. People actually still like personalization who doesn't want to feel special right so we can go back to the days of direct marketing and like donovan said know your customer listen to your customer a customer 
calls you, they say something, make them feel extra special. Like, you know, sometimes I do personal shopping for people and I'm like, do you want some things? I can send a driver with a bag for you, you can choose and send it back at your convenience. Um, and we figure out how pain will happen after that. But there are a ton of opportunities to assist us in times during COVID. And like I said, I think the most important thing is to ensure that you have a positive mindset because if you don't, you're just going to spiral into this dark, deep hole that is very difficult to climb out of. Um, interestingly, um, Kerry Manuman Home celebrates 16 years this year. And in January, I had actually given my landlord notice to say, I am moving, I'm going to look for a bigger space because I'm going to expand. It's time to revamp for my Sweet 16. Hence, it's going to be Sweet 16. Um, COVID happened <laughs> and I am still there. And just this month, I decided that at the beginning of May that I'm going to take two months off um, to regroup, to plan my space, revamp my logo and reopen the store for the last quarter of the year, um, expand it, revamp it, reopen. So again, I look at this as an opportunity to take the time and just revamp the brand and relaunch again, because hopefully by the end of the, the year, we should start seeing an upward trajectory, right? Um, and again, that's just planning. And, you know, sometimes like I email some of my suppliers and I'm like, I'm closing the store for a couple of months. And they're just like, I'm so sorry. I was just like, no, do not be sorry. I am so excited. I actually get time to sit down because, you know, Donovan can relate. And when you retail, and like I said, when you're a head cook and bottle wash, you are, you literally have no time to sit down and plan things that you would like to plan properly because you're so busy dealing with your customers. And if you have a small business like ours, we are directly relating to our customers and understanding them and, and, and creating a more experiential shopping experience. So um, that's, that's pretty much what I have to say. Um, this slide that is up is back to basics, pre-social media, you know, get your mailing list together, email your customers, call your customers. Make sure you have their birthdays, you call them on their birthdays, you offer them discounts and just personalize the experience. Um, my plan is that I am going to be working avidly. So like I said, we had our website for years, but the thought was, it's more for um, visibility online. It wasn't as much focusing on the sales like it should have been because it's a lot of work when you start getting into it and just figuring it out and, and it's time consuming. And like I said, when you're working nine to five under normal conditions, you just don't find the time to do anything else. So we have actually been revamping and we're quite happy with our website and looking forward to research search engine marketing and search engine optimization and promote the website for the two months that we're off in order to revamp, to reopen for the end of the year. Um, I think that's about it that, that I have to share. I don't know if um, there are any questions that, that will come in or if Robert wanted me to touch on anything else. Um, right now, we decided to have an insider sale. It's not a sale that we've started advertising. And I want to tell you, me never know sales so or people like sale. The store has been so busy. So again, if I didn't make the decision to revamp I would not have had a sale and business would have probably been flat. With the sale, I am liquidating. And I think it is more important right now to have cash flow than to be making a profit, right? You need the cash, the stock is there, sell it and have cash flow. There's no need to be stressing about profitability right now. Just keep yourself afloat, figure out how you can get people coming in and uh, move from there. Your mic is off, Robert. Your mic is still off, Robert. There, yeah. Okay, hear me now? I'm hearing you now. Excellent. So, Kerry, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I really appreciate how practical what you said, you know, as in these are things that we can implement on the ground right now. 
And I'm going to start off with the last point that you said. Cash flow is more important now. So if you can, you know, maintain your customers, get the cash flow going. But, you know, you said at the, the top of um, your presentation, change your mindset. Stop, things, you know, don't go to do my room side. Change your mindset. Be positive. And as we have been saying from morning, start looking for the opportunities. They are there to dig them out. And then you spoke about personalizing the experience, the experience um, in essence. And it's also the opportunity to regroup. You're not that busy. It's, time to, it's the opportunity to regroup, rethink, and hey. even rebrand if you need to. Yes, sir. I also wanted to say, not because we are in the fashion industry, we need to also think and limit ourselves. Now is a good time if you got the balls to look at the stock market and invest because again these people the bill gates warren buffett the young all these people they will say and they have said you need to make money in your sleep you're not supposed to be working all the time to be making money so you went out to facilitate that if you have the time or if you have the balls or if you have the a friend who you trust to be a financial advisor, speak to them and figure out, you know what, I have this, don't, don't bargain and don't gamble. I'm no way saying that. But if you have a, a little bit of extra cash and it could be a little bit, it's a good time to make some investments on the stock market um, because your money will work for you because what goes up must come down, right? And we're in the down and it will go back up. It may take some time, but it will go back up. So to also understand that, I don't think we should limit ourselves as fashion people or creatives to just the creative industry. We need to be open to finding other ways to make our cash work for us. Most definitely, most definitely. Well, you're dropping some real gems this morning. Yes, sir. As a business owner, I always, and I say this to my staff and I say it to my friends, if you get paid $10, save $2. And don't depend on yourself to have um, the discipline to save the money. Set up with your bank and say, take a standing order out of my account every single month. And don't touch that money. And you would be so surprised at the end of a year or two years, you little $5 or $10, how it adds up that you're forgotten about. You know, you have the mindset, this is saving. So for, for business owners, um, self-employed people, we have to think like that because we don't have no pension plan. Our pension plan is our savings. Oh. So if oh. more people could do that and, and do what it is you can, if you think that $200, no money, you'd be surprised at how it adds up and how you make you have a couple hundred thousand dollars by the end of a year or two years or three years and you forget about it. So that is something I wanted to also just share with everyone um, to try to just start doing that because you really make yourself feel a lot more comfortable and less panicked when a pandemic comes about. Granted, hopefully we shouldn't have one for the next hundred years, but still, I think it's a good habit to form. Most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, just to highlight, um, just to highlight another point you said, which is key at this point, it's time to get online. Even in Jamaica, the businesses, a lot of businesses that are doing well, the couriers, um, et cetera, the persons who started when you said, said hmm, what that for? But no, it's the, also the online businesses that basically are getting ahead locally and internationally. So. Now is the time, we have the time. Get your online presence together. Thanks again, Curry. And finally, last but definitely not the least, for sure. Hold on. We have. Yes, okay. Robert, you're on, you're on. Go okay. ahead. Great. Robert, your mic keeps chipping in and out. Okay, are you hearing me now? Yes, I am hearing you. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Sancho. Um, so our final presenter this morning is Ayana Dixon of the ASD brand. Uh, Ayana... I have a long relationship with Anna. I um, actually taught her a long 
time ago. And it's really great. I read it's really great to just see how she has um, pivoted and just used her resource, her talent to really just evolve a brand that you know is fairly known, definitely known in the creative community. And she really innovates in how it is that she engages the market on different platforms. You know, she started with fashion as the main thing. No, fashion is just one of the things that she actually does. And, you know, she, she, she's done lots of collaborations with multiple people, including um, Collection Mother, where she does these fabulous um, murals, often for the entry space, etc. And even, you know, in other zones as well. So she ha actually has a book out. Um, I think the sky is not the limit. I think that's it. Uh, and um, just really multifaceted, and I think the embodiment of just how is it that we are to engage um, the space and the market in terms of just getting ahead. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome Ayanna Bix. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, um, let me share share my screen. Is it sharing? Share screen, start the broadcast. Okay. All right, so can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. All right, great. So um, basically, when I started, I'm gonna tell you guys um, about my journey and kind of teach you some lesson nuggets along the way. So when I started, um, as a fashion designer, most people will remember me from Mission Catwalk. And basically, when I was on that show, I was fresh out of school from New York. And I honestly, I wanted to be this luxury designer in Jamaica, doing ready to wear and stuff like that. And as um, after the show, I kind of realized that that was really, really hard to get into because of, you know, financial limitations in terms of getting luxury fabrics. And also, just finding the right production team. I didn't necessarily want to produce everything for myself. Um, and then also the price points. I mean, I can't necessarily compete with the prices of, you know, like Adana Karan if my exchange rate is so high and then I have to import all the fabrics, etc. cetera. So um, that was my start, being on Mission Catwalk. Um, when I just, just decided to do my brand though, ASB, I said, okay, well, I love swimsuits. So I used to make swimsuits for myself and I used to do these hand-painted shirts. And literally the hand-painted shirts were just something that I did for myself. And people were like, oh, I like that. You know, like, can you do that for me? Or I'd like do a thank you card for somebody. And I would do like a little illustration and on the, you know, on the thank you card. And people would be like, oh, I love that so much. So this was the beginning of my brand, swimsuits and illustrated t-shirts. Now. Um, for me, I studied fashion design in university. So, you know, like I really, fashion illustration was just a component of the overall picture. Um, it wasn't something that was like, you had to know more than you needed to know sewing. It was just something that I kind of took to because I like to draw and I always used to draw from, as far back as I can remember, I used to draw little fashion doodles in my class books and stuff like that. Anyways, so... Um, when I decided that clearly the route of going to luxury to become a luxury Caribbean brand was just not the route for me, just based on the restrictions that I had, not having um, cash flow or investment or not having raw materials easily to be accessed, etc. I said, okay, well, how am I going to develop my brand? And I used to still make clothes, um, ready to wear clothes, unquote, ready to wear clothes. But it wasn't as interesting as maybe the things that people could buy, you know, on Forever 21. I mean, I was selling to my age group. So, you know, they could buy the same thing for less or a nicer thing for less or the same price on Forever 21 or something more unique on those sites. So I said, well, how do I differentiate myself? So I started focusing on my illustrated shirts. Um, this is... Um, Ayana, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your screen looks, looks a little bit funny. It's dark. It's bright. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to look. I'm not seeing. Can you see it now? What are you seeing no, now? It, it, well, you unshared it. So go ahead and share it again and let oh. me know if it comes, comes back. Better. 
I don't know why on share it. Oopsie. If you can get it. Yeah. It share should be screen. Coming. It's a green button right beside the chat. Is it okay now? Yes. What is Yes, so go ahead with the, right, 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 right. great. Okay, yes. so, so yeah, so I said, okay, well, how am I going to kind of differentiate myself in this market? Because clearly, if I'm competing with like, you know, stores that have kind of similar products for less money, then people are usually going to just opt to, I mean, of course, there are people who will be like, oh, I love your stuff and stay true to your brand. But you're still going to have to compete with like a Forever 21 and they have like a really cheap role price point than what I'd be able to kind of produce and make profit off of. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to go the illustrated route. So that's how I kind of decided to become an illustrator. Um, at first, I used to just do the hand-painted shirts and the art pieces, um, like you see here on the left. And then I said to myself, well, okay, well, how can I do the illustrations on something different? And basically, I had an event that I was supposed to participate in, something kind of like Moda, and the person said to me, okay, well, you know, you have to bring illustrations. And I said, well, okay, well, how am I going to bring my illustrations if it's only, at the time, it was only the shirts and only the paintings. I'm like, that's so boring. What else can I put my illustrations on? And my friend literally said to me, you know what I saw? I saw like some makeup pouches. She's like, why don't you do that? And I was like, I can do that. I can put my illustration on that. So then I started doing the pouches. And once I started doing the pouches, I thought to myself, okay, well, am I, am I an artist or am I a fashion designer? And I was like kind of thinking about it because in my heart, I'm a fashion designer, but clearly now I'm turning into an artist, right? So um, somebody said to me, oh, you're an illustrator. And I was like, oh, what? An illustrator? I didn't even know that was like a title. Uh, so I started looking online, at res I'm doing research on like an illustrator and fashion illustrators and I found so many fashion illustrators and um, just stopping here to say to you guys that it's so important to just, if you're interested in, in something, to do the research. So um, I like to do these, these fashion sketches and I was on YouTube and I was on Instagram and I was on Facebook and I was searching and finding all these other people who are like me that were doing these types of products, like putting their sketches, whether it was fashion illustrations or illustrations of people or just artwork on different items. And that gave me the idea to do a calendar. And the calendar is like definitely one of my more novel products. It takes a lot of time. Clearly, I have to illustrate 12 um, different months and it's, it's a pretty high price point based on the fact that I produce everything locally and you know the quality has to be a certain standard. Um, so I don't really sell a lot of the calendars but it's important because the calendars get me a lot of jobs. So even though I might not get the return in you know a huge profit margin for my calendar, I, it's always really good visibility for myself because so many people will come to me afterwards and say to me oh my gosh you know I wanted to hire you because I saw your calendar on so-and-so's desk or I saw it on their wall or whatever. So just because something isn't necessarily giving you a profit right away or a high enough profit return or whatever, it can be seen as a marketing tool to get you other jobs. Um, so I used to do the, the mugs. So the mugs are like one of my best sellers. Um, literally, I hand paint them. I just um, kind of sit down probably play some music or watch like something on Netflix and I paint the mugs with my illustrations. Now, one of the things that people, people these days, I guess, mainly because I was one of the first people to kind of use illustration in this way in Jamaica. Like now, anybody see an illustration, it doesn't even have to be mine. And they're like, oh my gosh, I saw your work in the Gleena or I saw your work in this. And I'm like, that was not my work. <laughs> so my signature are my eyelashes. And um, what's important about that, which I'm going to talk about right now, is just kind of being, staying true to yourself. So the story behind the eyelashes, and I don't know if Robert remembers this, but when I was, did my first fashion course at Edna Manley, before I went away to university, I hated drawing eyes. I always thought my eyes were ridiculous looking when I drew them. And literally, um... I, I said to myself, okay, well, what am I going to do? And when I went to university, my teacher said, 
you know, I'm going to fail you if you don't draw eyes on your sketches because your work is good, but you can't not have eyes. So she said to me, like, why don't you find something to put there, like eyelashes? And I did these tiny eyelashes, smaller than what you see on the screen right now. And the eyelashes then turned into my signature because um, I was like doing my homework and always doing these eyelashes. And then when it would get on a presentation board, kids at school would be like, oh, you're the eyelash girl. And that has now become my signature. So it's important to kind of stay true to yourself. I do know how to draw eyes, so it's not that I can't draw eyes now, but this has now become my signature. So using a challenge that I had, um, and I guess it was kind of like an insecurity for myself, I'm finding a way to maneuver around that insecurity of drawing eyes. And now I've created this eyelash that looks just like um that's just my signature so people when they see this now they're like oh that's an ayana illustration you know um so i've been able to do um you know dream big and do these creative spaces so for example um this was at modo i think i can't remember maybe four years ago or five years ago um and i literally just reached out to carrie and the team and i said you know i want to do this space i think it would be super cool and um basically Sorry, Diana, uh, yes i think we're having picture issues again so oh no you can't see my screen hold on let me see it stopped sharing share well i'm not sure why can you guys see me hello I can't hear yes, you. we can see you. I'm sorry. I don't even know where you guys stopped seeing me. I'm not sure why it's stopping my broadcast. It's okay. Just go ahead and, and continue. Cause yes. So can you guys yeah. see it now? Yeah, we're seeing that one. Okay, cool. So I'm not sure if you were seeing this before. These were just the mugs that I was talking about. Um, so this space, literally, I saw a very famous fashion illustrator in Australia do a, a big space like this and I was like an installation and I said I want to do something like that um, it's important as any kind of creative to use your own initiative reach out to people literally I came to Carrie and her team and I said hey I want to do this space I did all my sketches and on the left you can see these are the watercolors that are like literally I think there were 11 just regular paper size and different things Sorry, like that you're on, the, you're on the mug screen so let's move it to the next Oh, okay. Can you see? What can you yes. see now? Okay, so you guys are a screen behind. All right, so that space was the first space, and then this is the second space that I did, um, which was basically I wanted another interactive space where people could come, and I had the helium balloons, and people were able to, you know, interact with the space, and it was fun. Now ASD has gone into, because um, clearly I'm a fashion designer, right? So I wanted to merge my illustrations with my actual clothing. So now I do a line of not just the t-shirts, I still do the t-shirts, but I do screen printed and hand painted shirts. I mean, dresses and different things. Everything is, um, my brand is really about empowering women through illustration and the fact that representation matters. So you'll see all types of different women with different hair types, different skin colors, different bodies, um, just celebrating life and doing adventurous stuff. Um, speaking to the book that um, Robert said I had, so as a part of Empowering Women Through Illustration, I now have a coloring book for little girls, um, kind of just saying to them, hey, you can be anything. So you can be a teacher, but you can also be a pilot. You can also be a CEO. Um, non-traditional careers that, I mean, because I went to a very traditional high school, they turn out doctors and lawyers and accountants. Nobody was really saying, hey, you could be a fashion designer or you could be an artist or you could be a singer. And I just think it's really important to kind of plant those seeds in the minds of young girls from early. So my coloring book is about that. Um, and then, yeah, so basically that, I think the slide that you guys are seeing now is my contact slide. So if anybody wants to reach out and has questions, but I really wanted to see, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. 
So, um, and just as everybody has said, like I've gone into doing masks. So this is like a hand painted mask that I do. And then I have a screen printed one, which is a little different and cute. Um, it's a lot, it's a different vibe. So this one is more money than this one. And then I also have like notebooks. And it's really and truly what I want you guys to all think about is like, okay, well, what my skill set is, what is my skill set? Like, what am I good at? What is, what's going to make me different from the other person that's selling, you know, a dress or, you know, whatever it is and honing on that skill. As I said, I didn't study illustration fully. It was like a component of my degree. And what I have done is just done a bunch of like, I've just done a bunch of research. So just like how, you know, people will be following their favorite celebrities. I literally follow tons and tons of illustrators, just different types of illustrators from, you know, whether it's kid lit, because I'd love to do some more books, but also just seeing what, you know, like what resources they use. Like literally an illustrator is like showing their workflow and I'm like, oh, what is that, that paint or what is that this? And always going back to the source because clearly as, because I went to school in New York. So the degree isn't as um, encompassing as like at Edna Manley where you do a textile component. We didn't do anything like that. So I have a textile designer on speed dial. I'm like, okay, well, I want to do this. Like, how do I make it so the artwork will look like this? And they'll say, okay, well, you need to burn two different screens or whatever it is. So it's important to have a toolkit and when I say a toolkit I don't necessarily mean like an actual toolkit um, that's important too but it's also important to have a team of people around you um, that you can reach out to and ask questions if you don't actually know like something so I don't know anything about textile design if I have an idea I'm like oh I want to create this on like a piece of fabric I literally call up somebody I'm like hey you know this is what I want to do I show them the reference and they're like hey this is what you do or you know, a photographer friend, I'm like, I want to do a shoot like this. Maybe I don't have the budget to pay them. Maybe we can collaborate. Um, but it's having good relationships with people who have skill sets that can support you and your business and um, have it being mutually beneficial for both of you guys. So it's not that you're just always calling and begging a favor or asking whatever. It's also important for you to be also feeding them as they're feeding you and developing and growing your business through that. I mean, as you can see, I'm here with all my girls. I also have on like the jacket with the girls. And yes, yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to say. I think I don't want anybody to be limited by, oh my gosh, it can't work in Jamaica. I feel as if so many people, when I just started with my sketches, even like, it's funny because even like sometimes I'd be dating people and they're like, why do you draw on these mugs? Like, I don't get it. You should just stick to designing clothes. And Clearly, that didn't work out. But now they're like messaging me like, oh my gosh, I love your stuff. I'm so proud of you. Like, it's so important to believe in yourself, guys. Like, no matter what it is, like, believe in yourself. And I think for me, that's a lesson that I probably should have learned from Mission Catwalk. Uh, Mission Catwalk was very, very hard for me because I was just out of school. I didn't really necessarily think, I didn't believe that I could really, really achieve, you know, like this big goal or whatever but it was also a great opportunity for me I grew a lot and um it really showed me that if I, I think if I had believed in myself more I would have placed first because I came second in that show um and I probably would have done better and I would have placed first so believe in yourself guys and have people around you who believe in you and that's all I have to say <laughs> Any questions or, well, now is not the thank question. You, thank you so much, Diana. <laughs> um, you know, and I hope we have just been looking at the whole trajectory since um, morning. Um, just highlighting some of the things that she said, differentiate yourself, differentiate your brand. So her move to illustration was a differentiation um, decision. It was about making, it's part of what Donovan had said earlier about what so yes you're making shirt that that but what what makes the shirt your shirt what makes the thing your thing right what, what you know what differentiate yourself from everybody else that you give them a reason to come to you and of course i mean everybody knows in jamaica you know you want illustration go to ayana um stay true to yourself um research 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 stay true to yourself 
and use your own initiative because trust me, I mean, I've seen Ayana's work on some spaces that when I saw, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised. And I was like, I didn't ever think about illustration being in that kind of a zone. But use the initiative. You know, the worst, you know, as them said, not meet a child but a failure. The worst is that the people can't say, well, no, not right now, you know. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, I hope that we've been enriched by the discussion. I'm seeing some positive um, feedback in the, in the chat. And just to remind you that if you actually have questions, now is the time to put them in. And we want to go through um, and begin to address, address some of those questions. Uh, Robert, you have gone mute again. Yeah, you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Right, so um, yes, read questions. How are we addressing the questions? All right, so I have one question here from Yolanda in the chat. Um, when I think shopping in Jamaica, I think online, although I feel that I'm a creative at heart and would like signature items convenience, how do we find quick access to these items? To access to, to signature items. So quick access to signature items. Um, yes. I'm going to ask um, Kerry if you could do that because I know that you have a you have something like that that you do for your boutique. If I'm not mistake, mistaken. Yes, we support well, not just local but Caribbean artisans. And um, other than myself, there is my Jamaica. There is um, things Jamaica. So there are a bunch of places that support local artisans and local creatives that um, Yolanda can get quick, easy access to. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not too sure if I was understanding the question, but I also was thinking, maybe she was asking how, you know, how is it that, um, you know, let's say even as artisans that you can set up a scenario where people can, let's say, get a custom item, even though you might be offering, let's say, some standard items um, in your, you know, on, you know, on your website. Or that. So well, as a creative, I would suggest, again, going back to building your own platform, starting if the website is intimidating, doing it on your Instagram, but ensure that you have good quality pictures. I mean, any blog that you read and all the platforms which Shopify, Squarespace will tell you that when you have good quality pictures, the products will sell easier and faster. Um, and other than that, if she wants to have her products in different places, it's very simple to reach out to you know, owners of stores that support local artisans to say, can you sell my items? And some stores, especially in these uncertain times, <laughs> will um, probably not want to buy any new products now, but the opportunity is also there to offer them some things on consignment. It's better to have the visibility than not. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Um, Donovan, any, 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 any um, questions for that? Well, um... So I, I think what Kerry has said, you know, basically the challenge that a number of, of um, small businesses, businesses locally face, is uh, they, they, to get the support to be able to build a website, to do it properly, and then ultimately to do the back end work, which is to deliver the goods. Um, you know, it, it, okay, so you, you, you get your pictures done, you get out on Instagram, you put it out, you get 2,000 likes, and then somebody sends you an order from Miami, and they want one cup, and they want one t-shirt, and suddenly, how do I get this one cup or this one t-shirt to this customer? I'm selling it for $25. The, the, the post office is going to charge me $15. So it, that changes the whole pricing. FedEx is going to charge me 40 And the next thing I know, it ends up in customs in Miami and doesn't get to the customer. And I've already collected the customer's money. So then they go back on their PayPal and they get a refund. And so now they have the money and your cup is in Miami customs and you're all stuck. 
so it, it's not it, it's I'm, I'm not being negative I'm just saying that um, there's a challenge there that we have to see through yes presenting it having a website making sure that your market can see your goods fantastic I agree with Kerry 100%. Take this time now, kind of more downtime, to do that work and make sure you, you are building your online platform. Moving forward, there are going to be less people coming into your stores. There are going to be less people willing to come and try on clothes. People are squeamish now, they're sanitizing their hand. I mean, the notion of somebody coming in, taking off the whole of their clothes and putting on your clothes to try on for the next couple of months, probably years, is going to be a turn up. So now we have to take the market to the customer. We have to get in their living room, in their space, on their cell phone. Yeah. We have to be able to collect our money and deliver the goods. So we have to do that work. So the banks now are getting all, all innovative. Um, speaking of the turn, but Scotia Bank, they have, um, well, let me not advertise anyway, but the banks are doing, are, are getting innovative and they're trying to create a platform so that local people can get paid in Jamaica dollars. If people overseas buy, we can collect our money. Uh, now we need help uh, from our JBDC, from the say, how do we get our goods? into the marketplace. It's much easier to buy a t-shirt in Miami and collect it here. Mail park brings it in and you, you get it, a charge of $500. It's harder for us to sell a t-shirt in Miami. And, and we, have to, we have to tackle that, we have to tackle that. And if you don't permit me a little bit sure. more, um, you know, Ayana, Ayana has just displayed what our fashion industry has to our industry has to offer. You know, there's the passion and creativity and it's fantastic. And there are many, many islands in Jamaica. We need to be able to pull that together into an industry. And an industry requires institutional support, which is what JBDC is giving. And this is fantastic. This forum is fantastic. And a lot of the work in it is fantastic. Then it requires technical support uh, to ensure that we do better and better at our quality and it requires marketing support. And small businesses can't do it by themselves. You know, so Kerry does a fantastic job. She does the motor show and she pulls in a lot of people that are fantastic. We need a hundred, you know, more. And we need to, we need to convert this thing to an industry and, and really begin to turn out the kinds of, the kind of work in the quantity um, that Ayana is displaying, that many other people are displaying. You, yourself and Laura will know honest time when I say, I, I miss the cluster, you know. The cluster, the cluster we, we did good work. Ayana was a baby at the cluster days, but um, <laughs> and, and now we are, now we, some people would say, well, you know, that's history, but it's not history. We're seeing the people in the local market emerging. And we know, you know, some of the history and all that. And, and it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm going off on my passion again. <laughs> okay. Robert. Um, okay. All right. So let me hear from Laura and then Ayanna. All right. So I just wanted to um, just some things that came out of the presentations before. And as, as Donovan spoke, I think it's important to just emphasize some, some points. All right, so when Kerry spoke about going that extra mile, as she spoke about that Jamaica mug, you know, just gifting a mug and then the results of that. Sometimes, and I see someone asking in the chat about differentiating themselves. Sometimes it's just that extra mile that you've gone because you don't know how that returns to you. You know, when someone sees you being able to go the extra mile to deliver a cup or a t-shirt and then they don't pay for it, they say, but hmm, I, I want to do business with this person. And sometimes that extra mile, as I said, is what differentiates you in a space. There is also, um, Ayana spoke about her signature. 
And this is something we, we talk about in the classroom, Robert, when we talk to our students. So, okay, fine. Not all of us are going to be great illustrators or painters or whatever. But what is that one thing you are very good at? What is that thing that every time I see your, your illustration or you do a design, I see a kind of a recurring theme? Now, do, do you hone in on that? And that becomes your signature, right? You have to find something that when somebody looks at it, I can know Robert's work. I can know um, Ayana's illustration. So finding that signature is important. I also want to um, talk about the building of a team. And I think last, was it last week, the JBDC's concert series was about that. The, we, we have a notion that as creatives or as artists, you're doing it alone. And that's such a myth now. You can't do it alone. You need a team of people for dead with you. Even if a ball is a ball, you know, somebody's shoulder to cry on to say, Jesus, you know, so invest the money and the, the, the something them tie up on customs or whatever. You must have a team because you cannot do it alone. There are some things you're going to be very, very good at, and there are some things, kill me dead. Don't give me the accounts to do. I do it, you know, but me don't want to do that part, right? So you must find that team that helps you along. And I think going into the next wave, you know, when we come out of this COVID, the people with the strong teams, they're going to be ahead. Yes? And one last thing is about not stretching yourself too thin. I think sometimes as creatives, we have one million ideas and we want to get all of those ideas out there. But really, you have to streamline your ideas and start with the thing that you know you can deliver consistently and deliver consistently well. So if it is a t-shirt, if it's a one t-shirt that gets you going, start with that, do it well, because then the customer base would recognize that, yeah, man, that is a rotted good t-shirt, you know. I wonder what she going to come with next. And as, as Donovan said, when you listen to your, con your customers, when they see them, I'm going to say, so Laura, I see the t-shirt. I'm going to love the t-shirt, you know, but I'm kind of ready for a sweatpants now. Can you work on a sweatpants? You know what I mean? So don't try to stretch yourselves too thin. Don't try to take on everything at one time. Hone in on what you're really, really good at and start there. Thank you so much for that contribution, Laura. Some great key points there, Ayana. Oh, what I wanted to just touch on was um, mailing. Um, so I've had an e-commerce website for two years now, and um, Jamaica Post is not that bad. <laughs> right now, because of COVID, they're only shipping to the US and Trinidad, but outside of that, they, are, they ship globally, and you can track online and everything like that. So if you're, they have two different things that you can do. You can send by a parcel, which is, I think it's 250 Jamaican dollars per pound. Um, that's the cheapest one and that offers tracking. And then they have a partnership with DHL, which is I think $4,000 um, and it has tracking, but you get the package sooner. So I think the first one that's 250 is like two weeks or two to three weeks that the person will receive the package, but it ha offers tracking. So, you know, the person will be able to see where it is along the way. Um, and so yeah, so there are ways to get around the things that are super hard. I mean, if you want to go to, straight to DHL or FedEx, it's at least $60 to ship to certain places. So you just have to keep calling them, keep up to date. Um, and if you call in Jamaica Post, just because I've done this so many times, it's better to go there because people are there. But like, if you're going to call them, go to the half, call the halfway tree location. They always answer. <laughs> The other locations, they never answer, but the halfway tree location, they answer and they'll give you the information. Um, but if there's a will, there's a way, right? So you don't want to say, there are going to be lots of challenges. Of course, being in a third world country, it's difficult, right? But we are Jamaican, we're resourceful people, and we literally, like, we come up with anything at drop of a hat. So just don't be limited by whatever roadblocks may come your way. Just keep pushing and trying to figure it out and ask questions because everybody was starting from, you know, where you are starting. So just reach out, DM somebody on Instagram, whatever it is. If they don't answer, whatever, ask somebody else. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for that. Um, I want to use that and just, um, I don't know if Kerry, if you could um, jump in here, but um, in terms of e-commerce, are there any other points that you could give in terms of the actual, so the actual process in terms of, you no. Know, 
you know, fulfilling the order, you know, ensuring that you're satisfying the customer through that journey? Is there anything that you can contribute to that? You know, truthfully, I have not had any issues at all. I haven't had um, any problems with anything getting stuck in customs. We offer a pickup in store option for people locally, and our flat rate for shipping is $15 because, like Ayana says, we go with Jamaica Post, that's the flat rate, and the customer decides then and there if they want to pay the $15 for whatever it is that they are purchasing. Um, but no, like Ayana said, where there's a will, there's a way. And in my mind, one dollar better than no dollar. So uh, make the sale. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah. If you allow me, um, yeah, the um, experience carries us. Yeah, it's it, it mine too on the on the retail side. It gets a little bit more complicated when you when you get a wholesale order. Okay. Uh, you have a you have a box that maybe. Uh -huh. Mm, let's just say when you add it all up, you have 900 US dollars worth of goods in it. Um, now suddenly you're in a different different ball game. Yeah, you're in a different ball game, and it does require um, some paperwork. I mean, we have I you know I I I do a lot of it on behalf of our company, and it's it's doable, tedious. Um, but doable, but people have to formalize. You have to, it, it's a part of the work that we have to do. Um, first of all, you have to register. And, and so That's an a lot of the informality, a lot of the informality that pervades the industry, um, it, it becomes an impediment if you want to grow. Um, you know, you can't, you can't legally export if you don't have a registered business and a TCC and a, and a, and, a, and a, a TRN and, and so on, right? Um, so people have to have to be willing to embrace that and understand that, um, because if not, then it's an obstacle. And, and then you have to do the paperwork, and you have to be able to do the business side, cost it in. You may need a broker. You may not if you can do it yourself. But every step, every everybody that you employ adds to your cost. So you're not selling a $20 um, item anymore, you might be selling a $30 item, you know, and, and if you do it properly. Um, so the, the, the challenge really, and, and speaking again of the wholesale, is that especially in the North American market, especially in USA, Canada, um, when you do sell, nobody nobody's interested in getting shipping documents from a broker or whatever. They want a box delivered into their stores, into the store. Whether you carry it on a plane yourself, or you send it by FedEx, or you ship at your business, or whatever that cost you, that's your business. They want a price, they want it delivered. We have to figure out how to do that, and we collectively have to figure out how to do that. And, and it, it does have challenges, you know, it does have challenges. Thank you so much for that. Um, just on another note, uh, just kind of going back a bit, we spoke about photography and just the importance of photography to, you know, know that, you know, we're pushing the whole thing up online and the necessity to, you know, engage that space in terms of interaction with the customer. Um, photography, how do we tackle that? Um, anybody, you know, what's, what's the process? What's the best way to get it done? I know Ayana spoke about probably collaborating with some people and, you know, it can be expensive and so you know, I think, sorry. Okay. You go. I think no um, is a good time. Um, I think everybody is, uh, you know, struggling to stay afloat. And I think it's an opportune time to reach out to photographers and say, can we do a collaboration? Because I'm pretty sure now we have negotiating power. So where it may have costed X before, I think now is the time to negotiate with anybody on anything, if you're a landlord for rent, with your bank for moratoriums, whatever it is, I think it's a good time to just reach out. I mean, there are so many photographers for, at Edna alone, look at how many students are doing photography there. I'm pretty sure they jump at the opportunity. So if it is that you have zero budget, Edna is a good place to start. I mean, I send emails to Laura all the time to say, Laura, I need a graphic artist who is willing to get experience and be paid. Um, you know, less than what if you're going to a marketing company, for example. So 
photographers are you find them online easily and if that is not an option go to Edna Madley because they offer courses and their students who would be willing a to get the experience and the exposure and to get something Thank you. Okay, well, so what I would say I mean of course I agree with everything Carrie said I mean you know there's as I said you need a toolkit right so if you can do the photography thing then fine but what I do, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I partner with a photographer, for, but for example, when let's say I had the masks and I said to myself, okay, well, I don't need to do a big shoot, right? I just need to have a good phone. So I have an iPhone and I feel like Samsung's are good too. Androids are good too. But like, I find that this, the iPhone quality is just so much better and you just have to make sure that there's right lighting. So literally I've bought a whole, I wish I could show you. I have like a, a whole thing over here of cartridge paper, different colors, I have different color backgrounds. And I literally put the cartridge paper outside on the veranda when it's nice and sunny. <laughs> this is my, this is my studio, right? And I just set it up. And I put my put my mask down, or I put my notebook down, and I stand over it, try to make sure there's no shadows, and I take the picture, and then I just crop it, you know, like using the app or whatever it is, and I zoom in closely. And of course, you can do it. I mean, if I had a model, it might be a little bit more challenging, right? But you can you can try and figure it out yourself. You know, all you have to do is have a good camera. You know you need proper lighting. I've actually, I think, I don't know if Nikon is still doing it, but if you are interested, I know Nikon was doing a free course teaching everybody how to use Nikon cameras in April for the whole month. Like I literally did that course just so I could know, okay, well, I don't have no fancy camera. I just have an iPhone, right? And I don't even have the newest iPhone, but I'm like, well, I need to be able to take good pictures. Sometimes it works out that I get a photographer to work with. Sometimes it doesn't, but I need to be cost effective and I need to be able to think on my feet. So this is how I do it. And I'm not knocking anybody else's way, but this is a way that you guys can do. So that's it. Well, as you said, you know, as we've been saying since morning, as Kerry said earlier, keep it positive and begin to look where there's a will, there's a way. Definitely, for sure. Um, there was a question that I saw earlier um, that came in, um, you know, it's a fashion conversation and they were asking about, you know, what were the trends that were in, what were the key things to be looking at or to be paying attention to even in terms of product direction for fashion. I mean, I know that things are a little bit different now in terms of fashion and trends and that kind of thing. But um, I'd love to just hear from the different participants from their perspective, you know, whether as a retailer or as a producer, et cetera. Just what are you seeing as some of the things, the notes that we need to pay, and pay attention to, even in terms of what we infuse into our products, in terms of color, fabrics, etc., silhouettes? Any takers? Laura, you must start. <laughs> I'll go. I'll, I'll, you know, okay. I go. All right. Oopsie. Lori, okay. Um, I would just, I'm not going to go into like what trends to follow. I'm not very trendy in my designs. I kind of just go with what I feel for. But I think um, what is very important is just assessing what people are doing. So clearly everybody was doing masks because we all need masks, right? This is now the new way. You can't go outside without a mask. Everybody needs a mask. So it's, maybe not necessarily reinventing the wheel but reinventing the mask okay how many different styles people are going to want different styles yes they bought three masks for me last time but eventually they're going to be like mm, this don't go with my outfit etc etc right. how can i reinvent that um also if people are staying at home um depending on if you're in jamaica or elsewhere if people are staying at home more what are they doing more of I've been noticing everybody turned chef, everybody turned baker, everybody's in the kitchen. Okay, well, what do they need to be in the kitchen? Like, they might need aprons, they might need, you know, like, think about what people are doing now with all the time they have on their hands and say, okay, well, what can I do to support that? So that's all I would have to say. Graph extension. Thank you so much. Yes, Carrie. Oh, okay. I was just saying, um, 
Diana brand extension. She's so right. It's so funny that you asked that question because I don't know about Laura, Ayan, and Donovan, but I haven't even been paying attention to trends. <laughs> no, the only thing I know is that the fashion fashion weeks have been cancelled. I know that big um, designers and big fashion houses have decided they're skipping the whole resort collection and going to focus on fall because have all these collections to sell so I personally haven't even been paying attention to trends as it relates to colors and fabrics but what Ayana said I think is, is the right way forward look at that to see what people are doing and um, formulate some brand extensions Robert yeah I, just, I found it funny when you asked that question because in trying to prep for this session I actually did go on to see what were they forecasting for 2020, you know, 20, and then some of the things were oversized hats, bamboo bags, shell jewelry, embellished belts, but then I'm saying, we ain't going anywhere, so where the hell am I going to be wearing this broad hat anyway, you know, and you know, yeah, yeah. Truth, truth, I know, right, truth be told though, um, I don't think Jamaica, when I look at our landscape, we've all, we've been so much of you know, we follow the trends to the T. We have set trends, however, and some people are definitely guided by it. But um, we also just like, you know, we have our own style. You know what I mean? We mix and match and you know what I mean? And, and that's one of the fun things about our space in the Caribbean, you know? And um, I remember I was looking, I was going through Facebook and someone um, commented, boy, how oh, them not seeing anybody with no whole selfie anymore because them can't get the hand shell and the foot shell and the facial, right? <laughs> but I'm telling you, people are decking out. So I'm still, I'm seeing people like Colleen Douglas, call, calling out Colleen Douglas, who every now and then she does a post, dresses up. She's out there on the beach because she lives on the seafront and she is, you know, just channeling that kind of, you know, the fashionist herself. And I think we'll be seeing more of that. And so some new trends are going to pop out because people are at home and they're, they're pulling out the sewing machines and they're looking at the closet, looking at the things that they're tired of and going cut up and repurpose and, you know, so it should be interesting when we all get back outside. Indeed, indeed, indeed. You said that key point there, repurpose. As well as I also saw somewhere else where, you know, the whole issue of self-care. So self-care, so one of, the, one, of, one of the areas to look at even in terms of, you know, from brand extension as Terry has highlighted, was the issue or is the issue of self-care. So instead of think about, think about self-care as an, a catalyst for product that you'd actually be doing at this particular point in time. Donna, you have any contributions? Robert, I, I missed that. Just say it again. Oh, we were talking about trends in terms of just trend and product direction. Um, you know, um, just from where you sit, you know, what do you see as, you know, you know, where is it that, you know, we as designers need to be looking in terms of the next move, the next step in terms of product, color, style, silhouette, etc. Well, you know, like, like the other guys, we, we're not really on the, on the front end of the trend line. But, but I think COVID has, has completely dumped all of the trend forecasts overboard. And, and now we're looking, you know, a whole new um, world, as it were. I mean, now we're looking, you know, I, I would think for the foreseeable future, every outfit has to have a matching mask, for example. Uh -huh. just, just, just as a, as a, you know, as a, as a side. And people will be thinking more in terms of, of just literally covering up, just just having a little bit more, not necessarily, you know, hooded garments, but at the same time, a little more conservative thinking, maybe do I want to be so exposed? Um, you go to a party and somebody sneeze and everybody might leave. So I, I think there are going to be elements in here that um, maybe we just have to broaden our minds uh, and, and say, well, when we get into post-COVID, where exactly are we going? Right. All things reside where, and, and and we're just hoping that we have an industry, and you know, when when this is all done. Yeah, yeah. thanks for that. So I mean, even so, the key word I'm getting up from you there is protection. So again, for the designers out there, that could be a catalyst for us for you move things forward at this point. Uh, answer. Are there any additional questions?
Sanso, are you there? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was I stepped away for a second. No, there aren't any other questions. Just wanted to read something from Carrie Ann Dwyer, though. Yes. She is letting persons know that she runs a freight forwarding company, yes, a healer Jamaica Limited, located at 33 Windows Road, Kingston 5, I think it is. Yes. Uh, 876-622-3254 or 410-5138. So if you have shipping needs, you can probably check with yep, Perry yep, yep. and get that sorted. But it's generally a lot of um, a lot of um, kudos to the presenters. Ayana Kevar Telfa is asking, where is the course that you mentioned? I guess it's the Illustrator course that you mentioned. Um, illustration course, I'm well, um, I think, I don't know if I ever mentioned the illustration course. I mean, I did, when I, so when I initially started, I did a fashion course at Edna Manley, which they have several, they have a degree and they also have like an extracurricular activity course, which is what I did. And that's where I met Robert. Um, and then I actually teach fashion illustration. Right. So you guys can follow my Instagram page, which is by.asd, by ASD. Um, and I actually have been doing some lives. So last week I did a, a live illustration and the people who were a part of the live just helped me come up, helped me come up with like the concept. And then I gave away the illustration. So once you follow the page, um, there'll be lots of, whether it's a course or like a one-on-one -on -one session or something like that. But also for you guys in using your Instagram platforms to do things like that. I mean, you can have an IGTV, you can have a live and you make it more interactive. People will come back and people will say, oh, well, you know, she always does this or he always does this every week on Wednesday. And it brings brand visibility because people will come back you know, the young lady who won the, the illustration, she was so excited. I was like, wow. <laughs> she, was, she was on the live and she helped. She, I think she told me to put like move some colors around or whatever. And she was very excited. I feel like I have a loyal customer now. And she actually has never bought anything from me, but she's always wanted something. So this is how, use the time wisely in, you know, interacting with people, with your clients, prospective clients, um, and use what you have free things like Instagram, Facebook has a live function too. like just have a business page, set it up, call everybody and say, Hey, like my page, all your family, all your friends. It's okay to beg a follow. It's all right. <laughs> no, listen, the goal is to have people who follow you and support you. And I'm sure your family and friends are willing to do that. So if you don't ask, you won't get. So just ask and you shall receive guys. Yeah, I want to just come in a little bit, Robert, if you, if I may, and I'm going to shamelessly put a plug for the Edna Manley College right now. So I see people asking about illustration courses. I see something about um, photography. Um, feel free to go on the Edna Manley College website or to call in to get some more information. We do have um, evening classes um that are run summer coming on and well summer might be a little off because of yeah the shutdown yeah but yeah. um definitely going into the the next academic year um people can get information on that and I'm, I'm really hoping that we can get things back up and running as soon as it's safe to do so so yeah just wanted to put that plug robert awesome yeah man thank you so much um, all right, I think we're at the end of our time. I want to thank everybody for participating. And just the last thing, I just want um, 30 seconds each each panelist. Just what are your wrap up words? What's your final charge? And hey, Robert, with... Robert, Robert, before you do that, um, yeah. oh, yeah, it's there, there, there you go, that's me. <laughs> um, before you do that, um, I wanted to share with the participants two things. One is that um, uh, we did share the results of the poll. I know, I know when you take a poll, you want to see the results of it. Um, so um, you can check that out. Um, and also, before we close, we are going to um, ask you again to, to do another, um, just a quick one question poll so that, so that we can gauge 
um, the, 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 you know, how, how, how well we did in terms of the presentation of the session so that we can, we can monitor our, our performance itself um, in presenting these going forward. Also, I wanted to share with the participants that you know that we were doing a general mapping of the creative and cultural industries, JBDC, right, yeah. had undertaken, has, has undertaken a mapping of the creative and cultural industries in Jamaica um, in partnership with the British Council. And we had a survey instrument um, which we launched earlier and, and, we, and, and we were encouraging and we continued, we had really gone all out and encouraged persons to complete the survey. Um, and we got some very, very good results. I wanna share with the group though, since we're talking to our fashion um, family, that um, the fashion response has been has been um, um, not as not not as good as other areas. <laughs> so um, I, I want to. So so that said, I want to tell you that we had made, we have made a decision to to keep the poll open, to keep the survey open. Um, David, if you can type the the uh, the the All link right. in the chat. Um, so, so we have made a decision to keep the survey open. So while we're talking to our fashion family, encourage you to, if you have not done so yet, um, complete that survey about the creative, creative and cultural industries that will provide us with critical, critical data to move the industry forward as, as Donovan was, was, was suggesting earlier. I want to encourage you to do so at, um, at, 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 as soon as we're done, if you haven't already done so. All right, so thanks, Robert. That's all. You can go back. Continue. All right, yeah, man. Thank you so much. So, um, David will 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 provide us with the URL, and so you click on the link and just spit in the answers quickly, and it's, it's not going to take a very long time. Um, so yes, I was wrapping up. Um, we thank you so much for your participation, and just final words, thirty seconds from each presenter. I'm gonna start with uh, Donovan. Yeah, I um, just want to thank JBDC for the work you continue to do. Hopefully, the presentation um, help uh, the participants persons who logged in and just to share with everybody in, in the creative industry. You know, it starts with your passion, but it's a business, and you have to, we have to operate where your passion and the business, those lines intersect. And take everything on board, keep working, keep working hard. And above all, in this time, stay safe. Hey man, thank you so much. Laura? Yes, endorsing all that Donovan has said and also giving thanks to JBDC for this opportunity. Listen, man, we're going to come out of this strong. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some exciting things happening, you know, some new exciting things that, you know, hey, we have to think of, we have to keep that positive mindset as Kerry stated earlier. And so we just, it's just one of those things, it's business, it's the times, and we just have to stand strong, stay strong, and just keep at it, just keep at it, just keep at it. Keep doing what we're doing, keep, keep the passion high, and um, yes, that's it, look to the future, man. Definitely. Thank you. Kerry, final words. Your mic's not on. I think it said you're unmuted by the host, okay? Oh, well, um, you know. It's a good time to do all the things that you procrastinated about. Um, and it could be something as learning a language, just something to make you feel good, as opposed to, I know that we can just feel down and just Netflix and chill for the whole time. But, you know, doing things that we always plan to do that we never ever had time to do before, now is a good time to delve into doing those things. You know, make a list, get it done. And for small business owners, just start to think creatively and try to figure out different means in making your business work for you in order to stay afloat. Thank you so much, Ayanna. Um, well, just to believe in yourself, do the research, um, being in this industry, as Laura had said initially, is not just all glamour. It's a lot of hard work. So, um, yeah, just do the work. Um, and I say, I mean, as Kerry had just said, you know, it's important to kind of stimulate yourself, even if it's not through 
doing your actual work, um, you know, whatever, maybe you wanted to, I don't know, paint the garden fence or something like that. Like, you know, just or learn photography, like do things to inspire yourself. Um, I will just say like, I recently read this book called Big Magic and it was amazing in terms of creativity and just talking about harnessing your creativity and how to think about your creativity. And I recommend it highly. So if you are interested, um, you can get it audible. You can just buy the actual book, but it's awesome. So just stay positive, stay safe and keep working hard. Hey, hey, Robert, um, yes. sorry, again, um, just as you wrap up, can you remind um, the participants about JBDC's guide for mass making and how they can, uh, and how they can, um, uh, how they can get access to that information? Okay, great. So um, I know there are lots of people who are actually making masks um, at this particular point. The project development team, we have put together a little guide for you um forgive me i don't have the url on me right now but what i'm going to do is that i'm going to have them put it on the jbdc website have a link on the website so that you all can access it there so sometime i just you can also that. include it on the social media platforms Robert. right which is probably easier as well so i'm going to speak to um communications and to it and have those um posted in those spaces so you can access access them there that's on jvdc.net, um, as well as at our social media handles. Um, Sante, can you give us the social media handles, please? Well, wait, okay. We're on Facebook, Jamaica Business Development Corporation. That is JBDC Jamaica. And um, we're on Instagram. We're very active on those two platforms. Also want to say, though, that for persons who are interested in this recording, it will be available on our YouTube channel, JBDC Jamaica maybe by this afternoon or tomorrow morning it should be available and you you can also have access to all the other in concert um presentations that have gone before as well as the virtual business zones as well as the entrepreneur's journey so everything is available on our jbdc jamaica youtube channel so if you miss anything or you had a friend that wanted to see it but for some reason wasn't able to log in just check out the jbdc jamaica youtube Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone who participated. Thanks to all our presenters, Donovan, Laura, Kerry, Ayana. Thank you so much for your time. I know two hours is a lot of time. But I mean, just from the response from the chat, I know people really appreciate it. And the response from the poll, people thought it was really worthwhile. Thank you so much for the gems that you dropped. It's highly appreciated. And so to everybody, also, thanks to our support team, our um, technical team. We have Santi was coordinating the whole event. We have um, David as well, who was taking care of the technical operation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we have Mr. Davis as well. Too. So just want to just tell you, be safe, be positive, you know, look for the opportunities that are out there. And we're looking forward to see, to continue to see awesome things from our entrepreneurs here. Have an awesome day. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. You as well. Yeah, Thanks, Rob. Thanks.